if you played this game, this game, or even this game, then there's a fair chance that you've probably heard of Zoo Tycoon 3 or Zoo Tycoon Xbox and have heard how awful it is. Or at least that's what everyone seems to think. I'm here today to talk to you guys about the little bit of history that I know about Zoo Tycoon 3 and my own little experience with it. Of course, this is my own experience and I cannot speak for the rest of the community, but I at least want to give this game a little bit of a fighting chance. But before we actually get into that, we need to talk about what happened before the Microsoft buyout and understand the reasons why people didn't really respond all too well to Zoo Tycoon 3, as well as its initial and further release. There's not really too much information out there on the setup of Blue Fang games, but I'm sure you guys already know all that really is to be known about these guys. They started back in 1998, and they started off their company with the hit game Zoo Tycoon in 2001. It was an isometric park builder, much in the style of Roller Coaster Tycoon 1, but focused entirely on running and operating your own zoo. Due to the popularity of the game, Blue Fang set out to create three more expansions for the base game, be it Dinosaur Digs, Marie Mania, and the often forgotten Endangered Species Collection. This game was really my bread and butter. Unfortunately, I had just installed it from my computer before recording this, so I don't really have any play footage of me playing it, but trust me when I say that everything just clicked and this game is aged like fine, fine wine. I know a lot of people don't really agree with me on this, but I feel like Zoo Tycoon 1 aged so much better than Zoo Tycoon 2 from a gameplay perspective, legacy aside. The art style, which was uniquely made by the renderings of 3D models translated to the sprite form, very much online with how Rare accomplished the sprite work for Donkey Kong Country for the SNES, really helped to create a unique, antiquated, but nostalgic art style that I don't think any modern games can really capture anymore. With the success of Zoo Tycoon 1, it was given that a sequel was clear right on the horizon, and in 2004, Blue Fang set out to release Zoo Tycoon 2, to much acclaim. This time, however, they made the jump from 2D to 3D, which seemed to be absolutely perfect for a game like this. They introduced a ton of new mechanics with the new photo mode, a keeper and a guest mode where you could interact and clean up after your animals in the park, and so much more. It really felt like a step up gameplay wise as well, with a whole bunch of different modes to get into, as well as a sandbox which we didn't even have in Zoo Tycoon 1. Not to mention the DLC and expansions for this game, with endangered species introducing a whole bunch of new niche animals and new ride systems, giving you a better way to kind of traverse your parks, African adventures fleshing out the continent of Africa, Dino Danger giving us a little bit of a taste of dinosaurs, Marine Mania introducing animal shows and fully aquatic animals, as well as extinct animals giving a much more broader view on prehistoric animals. And not to mention, this is where Zoo Tycoon finally dipped their toes into downloadable content with the muskox and the addicts. All of these together have really helped to solidify Zoo Tycoon as a brand and built up a huge name for the series. So when Zoo Tycoon 3, otherwise known as Zoo Tycoon Xbox, was originally shown off at E3 in 2013, only five years after the Ultimate Collection of Zoo Tycoon 2 released, people were instantly drawn into it. Now under Frontier and Developments and Microsoft Studios, people were amped for the newest release in a long-loved series. However, that excitement didn't really last too long. Instantly, Zoo Tycoon 3 was met with negative reviews for seemingly a bare-bones game. IGN gave the game a 5.5 out of 10, and Metro gave the game a 6 out of 10. Not to mention that the Zoo Tycoon community at the time was, for lack of a better word, pissed. The customizability of the game that people love from the previous two installments was barely even there anymore. Pre-built habitats where you could only change the enrichment and feeders is the only way to access any creativity at all. You could change out the walls, benches, styles, and more all around your park, but at the end of the day, you're kind of stuck inside the boxes that the habitats and pathways give to you. 
it's kind of clear to see why this game was so quickly looked down upon. I had only recently given this game a shot in 2021. It was on sale and I thought, hey, why not? Let's see how bad this game really is. Now, the style of the game is one that's truly unique to itself, being kind of a product of modernization of franchises that we saw during the start of the Gen 7 releases of the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. It doesn't really feel like a successor to Zoo Tycoon 1 and 2. In truth, I feel like people kind of lump this together with the other ones when really it should stand on its own. It has nothing to do with the previous gameplay style of Zoo Tycoon, but instead it's just a Zoo Tycoon. The first thing I was met with for this game, however, is something that I do want to give Frontier and Microsoft credit for. The music and art style of this game is so beautiful. The loading screens and the music together just work so well and it just helps the game feel kind of like its own thing because when we look back at Zoo Tycoon 1 and 2, they were both very cartoony. They were both made with the idea that this game was for kids, but seeing as Microsoft and Frontier recognize that there are some older fans of the series, they kind of wanted to give this game a little bit more of that next-gen flair that we saw in a lot of franchises during the Gen 7 releases. But we're getting a little bit off track. Let's circle back to the gameplay itself. Of course, I haven't really played through the career mode. I haven't really had a desire to, but all my experience is going to come off of the sandbox experience. Well, quote unquote sandbox. We'll get there when we get there. But management really isn't anything to be noted over here in terms of that. I expected a little bit more, but seeing as you can basically throw animals in and they won't care at all, it just makes it feel a little bit less. Even the sandbox mode in Zoo Tycoon 2, you still had to manage your own animals to some degree, but in this one in particular, you really don't need to worry about them at all. You could just keep building habitats, and I don't really see that as a bad thing. It's just different. Now, one of the biggest complaints I see about this game is the actual habitat design and customization. But I would actually argue that this is a strong point of the game in the modern day. Of course, I wasn't there when this game originally launched. I wasn't there to see the disappointment in all the fans' faces when we found out that we can't really do the same level of customization as we can in Zoo Tycoon 1 and 2. But this actually works in its advantage in retrospect. This is an entirely different game. I know a lot of people prefer Zoo Tycoon 1 for the sprites and isometric style. Meanwhile, Zoo Tycoon 2 appeals to more people who want a 3D experience. Even Planet Zoo goes even beyond that to give you an even more freeform experience. But if you just want to pop in, look at some animals, place down some habitats, Zoo Tycoon 3 extremely excels in regards to that. You can build your own zoo in a matter of seconds. I mean, I'm probably going to have gameplay in the back of this video, and you can see just how quickly I put together this zoo. It's really insane to see the level that Frontier and Microsoft Games have allowed you to really tackle on this grandiose experience of making your own zoo. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention my favorite part of the game over here, staff vehicles. Guys, I love Jurassic World Evolution and Jurassic World Evolution 2 for this alone, just being able to drive through what you've created. It gives you such a different perspective when it comes to looking at your work and how far you've come. Being able to drive over your habitats, being able to drive through your zoo, over fountains, even pushing guests aside while you do that, is one of the best experiences to have in-game. And I absolutely thank Frontier for including this tiny silly feature that absolutely lifts this game up a few points in my own opinion. And, of course, one of the last things I do want to bring up in terms of looking at this game as a whole are the animals. And I have to give Frontier credit here. 
they've really helped to demonstrate a lot of unique animals all across the globe. I mean, agoutis and tamanduas already stick out to me. Even the more Australian wildlife with the brush-tailed possum and wombats and different things along the lines of that, even the parenti. But they skipped out on a bunch of key animals. I mean, they didn't have zebras, they didn't have gemsbok. It's just very confusing about the animal choices, but let's be it, I like them. I'm not really offended to the point where some other people might be that they can't get zebras in their zoo game, but it really did help to highlight a bunch of different unique animals. I mean, I love agoutis now because of Zoo Tycoon. Uh, but when you flesh out the roster with fake jaguar species and fake chimpanzee species, that's kind of where you lose me. But I will say at the end of it, there are a ton of awesome animal designs and there's a ton of awesome prop designs. Just all the designs in this game are so beautiful. And I really do feel like they found a true art style with the pseudo realism that, you know, Frontier was originally going for. And of course, before we close it out here, I just want to say the gameplay style is great. With the plethora of animals that you can unlock, the plethora of different species and subspecies, the game really does push you to build your zoo bigger and better and start to unlock even more just so you could see what's around the corner. And I feel like that's exactly where Zoo Tycoon 3 excels. It pushes you to keep playing because the whole discovery of what does a brush-tailed possum look like? What does a platypus look like in this game? It keeps you on your feet and it keeps pushing you to keep playing. And that's exactly why I love it, because at the end of it, the rewards are amazing. And it's just so fun to just discover new animals. And it really does help bring back that childhood glow about zoo games that we've come to love and enjoy. I truly do think that this game isn't what people expected it to be, that's for sure, but I don't think it deserves the hate that it gets. It's an innovative and easy to digest experience that a lot of people seem to quickly pass over, but if you ever get the chance, get this game on sale, try it out, and play it with an open mind. Thank you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video.